Greetings and salutations, my friends. You are listening to the Children of Film podcast. I'm your host, Jacob, here with my delightful and only slightly less good looking than me co host, Jaron. That's very fair, Jacob. Uh, I'll, I'll take, you know what? I'll, I'll take that considering the high and mighty, like just, just gorgeous f- stature of a man you are. I can, I can take that. How are you today? Well, you know, in some cultures, fat is seen as a sign of wealth, so it is seen as attractive. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Not Nas, unfortunately, and uh, <laughs> there's not a lot of wealth here, but, uh, you know, there's, there's a there's a wealth of passion for cinema, and that's what we're going to be uh, getting stuck oh, into God. tonight, my friend. Yep, yep. So, yeah, we've got a, we've got a pretty uh, a short show tonight, if our plans uh, indicate that, but knowing us, it'll probably go for 100 minutes, because, you know. Yeah. But um, we're going we're gonna to start off... Uh, This is me doing my best impression of a person who isn't tired, but uh, let's get into our diary display where we talk about all the shit we've been watching for the last uh, few weeks. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna you can go first this week. Um, Thank you so much for that. Considering you you went first last week, you gotta build it up to me because I'm just better. Exactly. Uh, So we'll we'll let the shit person go first, and then we'll let the fat one go second. (laughs) You know, it's just it's just sorry about you. Just got two fucking disgusting co-hosts. (laughs) <laughs> Let's start with I watch. I went to the cinema and watched Beauty and the Beast. It was just released. We got it a week after America, and I liked it, but it didn't have the magic for me that the original Should had. We just give our I, thoughts on it because we're probably not going to yeah. do a review for it because no, I saw it too this week, and we kind of just felt the same way. It's kind of it's pretty mediocre, I think. It's not as good as the animated. Um, no, and film. I didn't even love the animated that much. I I four and a four out four and a half out of five to four out of five love it. I think it's great. It has a lot of magic. Um, the, the songs are fantastic. Gaston is amazing. In this, uh, no, 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 I didn't really enjoy any of the characters. Really, I liked Part, Gaston. Maybe Gaston and a couple times, but um, I still think they should be Jack Kevin and Gaston. Kevin Klein but, um, was really good as Maurice. I thought. Oh yeah, he was great. But yeah. he was in. He wasn't in it for long. But um. No, I j- it just didn't have the magic for me. I gave it two and a half out Watson of five. Watson was all right. Like, she, oh, she, I, she looks good I in think the she costume. Was fine. She looks good in the costume and everything, but... She wasn't that I don't charismatic know, for I me. I don't know if I bought her as the character, really. No, I, she wasn't as charismatic for me. Yeah. I, um, and I, I had some problems with the CGI. Like, sometimes the beast just looked horrid. Yeah, sometimes I, it was really good gone, and the they castle really looked great, and, gone and, more but sometimes it just looked with him. bad. Yeah, exactly. They should have, but um, please no, give Dan just... Stevens better roles, please. So yeah, so we kind and of had the same opinion on Beauty matter. and the Beast. It wasn't trash, but it wasn't anything fine. It was mediocre. Yeah, um, I gave it two point five. Jake, could you give it a three? I gave it a weak three out of five. Yeah, I gave it a strong 2.5. All right, uh, then on Netflix, t- to watch the taste out of my mouth, I watched Blue Jay, a movie Jacob recommended to me. It came out last year. stars uh, Sarah Paulson. I love her. She's in OJ vs. The People. She's amazing in it. She won a Golden Globe for it. And this movie is really great. It's only like 80 minutes. It's really, really short, but it's just about these two people who were in love and they found each other, um, you know, they were high school sweethearts, and then it kind of unfolds into a big bombshell when you find out why they split up and why they are the way they are. And it was really good. It was really emotionally impactful, and there were both really great. The performances were fantastic. I went on to the cinema the next night again to see Life, a movie that is unfortunately going to be buried underneath Beauty and the Beast and Power Rangers and some mediocre reviews, which I thought was fantastic. I have a review up for it. You can go watch that. Talk I have about not it for four seen minutes. either of the three, and I already like Life more than those other two. Actually, <laughs> You've no, seen Beauty and the Beauty Beast. And the Beast. Sorry. But I saw Cure for Wellness one day before Beauty and the Beast. It's better than all three of them. Um, Life, it was... Yeah, I absolutely loved it. All the performances were great. The screenplay was great. The visuals were fantastic. I can't get into spoilers if Jacob hasn't seen it. Um, I just really and recommend most everyone go see it. Probably because they all went yeah, and saw Power Rangers instead for some reason. Uh, I don't get it. Life is original. I mean, it may borrow a lot from other movies like Gravity and Alien, but it is an it is an original movie with a huge cast, great director, screenwriters, the Snake writers of Journal. Deadpool. Like I don't, I don't get why people didn't go out and absolutely love this movie. But um, anyway, go see Life, please. I implore you over Beauty and the Beast. Just watch the original Beauty and the Beast. Stay home and watch that. Yes. Um, I watched Gladiator for the first time. Uh, Russell Crowe. I've been on a Russell Crowe binge unintentionally, and I really enjoyed that. It was fantastic. I. It was some of the cinematography was just oh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, I rewatched Toy Story. It was just on TV, so I sat down and watched it. I love the hell out of that movie. It's just so, it's just so charming, and it's not dated at all. It's just fantastic. Buzz, story. we missed the truck. We're not aiming for the truck. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't do the rest of that, no. That's that's enough. <laughs> um, I watched the 2017 Netflix movie Deidre and Lainey Rob a Train that you watched last week. Man. It was better than most Netflix movies, but it, was, it wasn't good. It was a that's two and like a half out of five. That's like saying the shit I took this morning wasn't as bad as the shit I took last night. It wasn't as smelly, Jacob. It, was not as, it wasn't as smelly as the other turrets in the toilet. It wasn't, it wasn't terrible. Yeah, It wasn't no. good, but it wasn't bad either. <laughs> Jacob, it did not stoink. Oh no! Don't don't do that. Um, I rewatched Hot Rod that I watched for the first time a couple of weeks ago because it's just Watch so it funny, again. and I love I love Andy Samberg. Yeah, I rewatched it. Um, I love Andy Samberg. I love everyone in it. Bill Hader. It's it's just hilarious. Um, and it's just funny every time I watch it. And that that falling down the hill scene just gets me every time. And when they're introducing themselves, hi, I'm Rod. I like to party. Oh, hi, I'm uh, I like to party. No, you don't like to party. I like to party. You say something else. And then G for, uh, and then Jorman Tacombe's just like, hi, I like to party. My name's Rod. <laughs> <laughs> just, just fucking cracks me up. I love it. Um, I rewatched Hacksaw Ridge finally because I got the Blu-ray about a week ago. The Steel Book, it's beautiful, and I love that movie. I too still rewatched it this week. It's Fantastic. Good Andrew it's, Garfield, man, you forget how good he was. In he's that. so damn good, man. Still better he's, in Silence, IMO, but he's fantastic no. in it. Ah, uh, it's close, actually. I don't know. I, I love. I, oh, I just, I just love him, man. Um. I watched Mean Streets, Martin Scorsese. is one of his first movies. Uh, came out in 1971, I think, with Robert De Niro. This is when he was taking a chance on Robert De Niro. This was their first team-up when um, the studio didn't want him to have Robert De Niro. They didn't think he'd be a good pull. Boy, were they wrong. Um, I mean, mm. f- almost... I mean, 45 years later, they were right. But, f- I mean, 45 years ago... Wow, they that seems wrong. like a long time. They were wrong. Um, and it was really good. It was kind of boring. Um, it's It's... I still really enjoyed it, but it's down the bottom of the line for Scorsese movies for me. In saying that, it's still three and a half. I haven't seen anything of Scorsese's less than three and a half, um, and I've seen like twelve or so of his movies. Um, I watched Power Rangers at the cinema. Uh, it's fine. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's not Transformers bad, but it's not great. Um, the chemistry between all the leads is really good. Um, the ending, the end fight is just garbage. It's just Rest nonsense. In peace. It's I'll just see nonsense. that. We don't get it for like another three weeks, but I will see yeah. it when it comes my way. Um, I watched our film swap that we will talk about later. Um, I watched. I watched a. I watched an Italian movie, Life Is Beautiful. I believe it won Best Foreign Feature. It's written, directed, and stars uh, Roberto Fellini. I believe his name ben, is Benjini. I believe. Oh, uh, is it? Is it? Yeah, Roberto L- Benini. That's it. Bro- Linguini Roberto Fettuccini. Benini. <laughs> Logini. <laughs> Roberto Benini. Um, it's so damn good. It's in the vein of Charlie Chaplin comedies, and then it also packs a big punch towards the end. Um, I watched the 2017 movie on Netflix, The Most Hated Woman in America. Uh, Melissa Leo is on fire. Absolutely amazing. Not enough Adam Scott, in my opinion. Um, mm. And it's it, Netflix is it's a good movie. Netflix is finally 3 out of 10 for this year. For me, 3 good movies, 7 three, bad. 3 out of 9 for me. Uh, yeah. Um, I watched. I rewatched Scott Pilgrim vs. the World yesterday, one of my favourite movies of all time. I just love it. Um, and then last night, I watched Scorsese's Cape Fear for the first time, and it was fantastic. Robert De Niro was absolutely amazing in it, He's but Jacob... In that. Jacob, the rightful winner, still got the Oscar that year. Mm, I think De Niro should have won that Oscar. Put Hopkins in supporting, give him the victory I'm not, there. Well, I, I, I would agree. Points. I would agree Hopkins go supporting and give Robert the Oscar for Kate. But if you if they're going up against each other, Hopkins is better. They shouldn't be IMO. going up against each other, though. Oh, no, they should not. But, I mean, I mean, it's there's no rules about where you like, can put one. It's just like, where the studio thinks they'll win. That's one of the best performances I've ever seen from De Niro himself. Like oh, was, mine would be raging, yeah. bull. So All right, you I need to watch that. All right, you go your diary display, mate. All righty, let's get into Jacob's uh, diary display. Uh, the first movie I watched this week was uh, Hannah, a movie I've had on Blu-ray for a while and never really bothered. I've been apprehensive to watch it because it was by Joe Wright, and the only movie I've seen of his was Pan, which I despise with a burning passion. But, you know, I gave it a chance, and I loved Hannah. It was so much fun. Like, it was made for me, a real stylish sort of action movie with this sort of coming of age story at the heart of it about this girl who was raised to be a perfect assassin and it's her trying to sort of you know come to terms with uh growing up and you know learning about what she is and it's got a great uh synth heavy soundtrack by the chemical brothers but seriously this has some of the best action scenes i've seen of the decade there's one action scene that's entirely in one take that is um absolutely insane like i seriously recommend hannah it was a lot of fun and saoirse ronan is amazing in it 
Um, all right. I watched Tucker and Dale vs. Evil upon Jaren's recommendation. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a, it a lot of fun. Oh, boy. We have had a doozy of a day. <laughs> there we were, minding our own business, just doing chores around the house, when these kids started killing themselves all over my property. <laughs> and the thing is, guys, they're not lying. They, 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 they literally it, did. It's a funny horror spoof type movie, and you know, there's a lot of originality to it. And it's, it's, just, it's just a bunch of... It's a movie just for... Full of like misunderstandings and misconceptions and shit, and it's really, really funny. And and there's a lot of heart towards the end well. too. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. yeah, Dale's a lovable dingus who who's kind of smart also, and yeah. gets a incredibly hot girl to fall in love with. Him. He's a Zach Galifianakis character before Zach Galifianakis was playing him. Yes, but he's not better but better yeah he's not a dick to everyone <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's he's sweet you love him yeah. zach galifanax is just a whirlwind of like <laughs> ignorant arrogance um his character in the hangover is yeah. um okay where am i I've although he does ridge. love we skittles about that i uh, love hacksaw ridge i watch that again it's a sexy steelbook blu-ray it is Beauty and the Beast, already talked about that. I watched that this week. I rewatch Horrible Bosses, one of my favourite comedies. It still makes me laugh every time. I've seen it so many times. Um, it's just, it's, it's funny, you know? If you so much as look at my sexy little ass, Julia, I will have yours locked the fuck up, you crazy bitch whore. Oh, that God, that felt good. good. <laughs> Jay. I, love I was Jeff, drag I love racing. Charlie. You were drag racing in a Prius. I don't win a lot. I don't <laughs> win a lot. Yeah, I love Jason Bateman, man. He's, and how good is Colin Farrell in that, man? Oh, dude, he is so... I didn't know it was him the first yeah, time I watched it. I didn't know it was him until, like, a couple years after I watched yeah, it. Yeah, same. He's, he's so like, damn... But I completely forgot about that line at the end. That is one of the best delivered comedic lines <laughs> in the past, like, I 10 years. Day, you yeah. crazy bitch! <laughs> Whore. Oh, that felt God, good. That felt good. Motherfucker Jones, you know. I want five thousand dollars. <laughs> no, we're not giving you five thousand uh, dollars. Two thousand. Why no. do they pay, pay for my drinks? You're not a very good negotiator. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait, Jacob. You know why they call me Motherfucker Jones? One night, I went oh, into no. my mother's room. She was passed out. Her oh, skin that hole was glistening. That hole was wide open, so I stuck my hand inside oh, that no. hole. Oh. And I took her whole week's paycheck. I really fucked her over. And that's why they call me Motherfucker Jones. Oh, they should really call you Motherfucker Over Jones, you know, to avoid confusion. What confusion? There's none. There's none. <laughs> We're taking Charlie murder Day. advice from a guy whose biggest crime is pirating a fucking Ethan Hawke movie. So, so you, you do, do know, know the, the movie. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, legend. <laughs> Alright, that's, yeah, that's Horrible Losses. I love that comedy. I watched Cape Fear, as did Jaren. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It was fun seeing Scorsese really let loose and do something, like, super over the top. Like, De Niro speaking in tongues at the end was a bit At the very end. But, um, no, it was a really, really great it's fucking movie. fucking scary. And it, it adds, like, you know, a darkly humorous quality to it. But it was so over the top and pulpy without succumbing to cliches and conventions. It kind of embraced raced cliches but turned them on their head at the same time i really loved cape fear it was a lot of fun uh i watched the 2016 film miss sloan starring jessica chastain who i'm a huge fan of and it's a fucking great movie i like this sort of you know um you know this political sort of investigatory sort of stuff she's this lobbyist and they're trying to pass a bill uh for gun control and stuff and it's she's like this ruthless campaigner who'll do like anything to it she'll do go to any lengths to win and i think it's the best performance of chastain's career and it's a really really great movie that kind of went under the radar last year and uh some great supporting really too, better than like, zero dark 30 as a performance, I'd say, yeah, it's been a while since I've seen Zero Dark Thirty, but no, nah, she's excellent in uh, Miss Sloan. Uh, and I, I I just, like, some of the supporting cast, I want to shout out Michael Stuhlbarg, because that guy constantly knocks it out of the park in every small character role he's given. And I think, like, he has the potential to do something really good if he's given some bigger roles, but he was really good in this, too. Uh, I watched Heathers, a movie my sister's been bugging me to watch for a while, from uh, 1988, the uh, Christian Slater, Winona Ryder, high school comedy. And uh, this this uh, this was surprisingly dark and mean-spirited, and 
I really, really enjoyed that about it. Like, Christian Slater plays this school shooter-looking motherfucker. His character's, like, a bit of a nutcase, and uh, it's just like... Uh, I, I won't spoil where it goes, because you should watch it, Jaren, but there's, there's a murder. It's, like, it, it, it's, it's very, very dark for a high school movie, and I really, really uh, enjoyed it. I love my dead gay son. Okay. I watched... Yesterday I watched Idiocracy, the Mike Judge comedy I've been meaning to for a while. And it's like, it's it's a movie that gets more, like, prophetic every day. Because, you know, America may one day be like this. Because it's about this guy played by Luke Wilson who, uh, he volunteers for this military exp- hibernation experiment. And he accident- accidentally gets sent 500 years forward in time. And he, he becomes the smartest man alive because everyone is so <laughs> fucking dumb now. Terry Crews plays the president and his name's like President uh, Dwayne Elizondo Mountain Dew Herbert Camacho or something. <laughs> and uh, like he was really funny. But it's just this really, really funny satire. The number one movie in America was called Ass. And that's all it was for 90 minutes. It won eight <laughs> Oscars that year, including Best Screenplay. The narration was really funny. And nah, I, I think you'll like this, Jaron. You'll get a lot of laughs, especially out of the first half. But um, it, it falls just short of being a great comedy, I reckon. But it's a really, really funny satire. Um, I watched our film swap, which I won't get into. And I also watched the Netflix movie from 2017, The Most Hated Woman in America. I... I, I didn't love it. It fell apart a lot in the middle, but it had a solid start and a solid end. And Melissa Leo was fantastic was in it. So if you, you know, you could do worse when it comes to Netflix movies. Um, a lot, a lot worse. <laughs> oh, Jacob, um, a fuck ton worse. Oh, a fuck ton worse. Last night I rewatched The Martian because I've been wanting to. I'm not going to lie. Coin Heist Martian. is one of the worst films oh, I've dude, ever seen. Dude, it'd be like top 10, top top 15 worst movies I've ever seen. Yeah. But yeah, I rewatched The Martian because it's The Martian. It's great. It's been like a, at least a year, year and a half since I saw it. And uh, I watched a movie today. I can't remember. Oh, I watched Signs today um, on Netflix because I've been what trying. What do you think of that? I've been trying to get through uh, Shyamalan's filmography. I quite liked it. Uh, it, 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 it. You start to see some of the bad elements of Shyamalan bleeding through it. Some really, really weird, questionable really? dialogue and stuff. But I actually, no, nah, I'd, I'd say that. I but I, re- I really love the movie as well. Like, I'd probably give it like swing a away, th- kid. Three and a half out of five. Um, uh, I would watch it again. I, I did quite enjoy it because Shyamalan has a real knack at building tension and suspense. Oh yeah, and, yeah. I like was so all... scared the very first time there was the TV and like the the creature just walks past yeah, like that. Yeah, but no, nah, Mel terrifying. Gibson was great and uh, Joaquin Phoenix as well. Um, nah, I enjoyed Signs. Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix was a bit weird in that movie. Actually, he's weird. He of... He's just a weird guy in general. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's so weird. He's, so <laughs> he's a weird, weird fucking guy. Yeah, so that's uh, that's our diary display, if you will. All um, right. So Let's go on to a bit of the news, Jacob. Oh, we've got we've got a bit of news this that week. That is the one. That's the shit. Oh yeah. So first of all, in our news today, ladies and gentlemen, now that you've been lubed up and we're in the podcast officially. Grinding up and down. Paul Greengrass, director of the Bourne trilogy and Jason Bourne and Captain Phillips, his best film, question mark, is now directing a film about Elliot Ness. Jacob, what do you think about this? I don't know who Elliot Ness is, so I'm going to let you tell me who Elliot Ness is. I know you told me before the show, but I have (laughs) forgotten. I'm not complete. I don't know this guy 100%, but I know he was an American Prohibition agent, and he was famous for... He he had, like, like a big Prohibition thing in uh, Chicago. Illinois, and he was basically like most famous for bringing down Al Capone, the leader of you know. So it's he was by night he was the lead. Yeah, exactly. Um, and his Electric law enforcement Brigley. agenda was um, the Untouchables. That's what their team was called, and they brought down Al Capone. And um, yeah, it was really good. So it's like it's isn't, like an Untouchables isn't movie. Isn't Tom Hardy doing an Al Capone movie? I think so. Yeah, with so like we're getting a, a director. Can't remember it who, is so it, it is a director, yeah. But yeah, no. Um, but I just yeah, they've already they have already made a movie about this 
called The Untouchables. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and, but it's a super, it's a superhero movie with Robert De Niro. I'm sure and, there are uh, a lot of <laughs> elements you can use to tell that story. That's right. Josh Trank's doing the Al Capone movie, so that'll yeah, be interesting. Yeah, and um, so, but Josh Trank or Paul Greengrass? I mean, it's not really it. Yeah, no. Nah, um, I'm keen to see him back. I mean, my hype's died down a little because Jason Bourne was good but underwhelming. But Captain Phillips is fantastic, and oh, the guy. I watched Captain Phillips um, recently, so my hype's back up. The guy's a fantastic action filmmaker, but it looks like this one's going to be more on the dramatic side, like not less heavy on the action. Like Captain so, Phillipsy. Yeah, yeah, we'll see how he goes. But um, another Greengrass movie I recommend is uh, United 93. Fantastic film. Oh, I wanted to see that. I'm really, I'm just pissed at Paul Greengrass because he made The Green Zone with Matt Damon and The Green Zone, uh, there's a misprint. <laughs> I have a, I have a, sc- I, all right, so everyone, Jacob knows the story. I bought a Scarface slipcover from my local DVD store. Um, it's a really sweet slipcover. It's in black and white. It's like comic book. It's awesome. But they misprinted and there's a, there's a quote, there's a movie quote from The Green Zone on the, t- on the, <laughs> Born cover. goes epic. It goes born goes epic empire, and I'm like, wait, what? What, <laughs> what is what is this talking about? And I looked up the review, and it's a it's a review for the Green Zone starring Matt Damon, God and it's on it my Scarface thing, and I'm just like, for God's sake, it is it just pisses me off every time I see it because it's uh, fuck's yeah. sake. No, I'm and, just oh, wait, you, for it's on every that. single one. I looked when I went to the store. <laughs> Everyone has born goes epic on the front. Did they not? Rest in Look, peace. but yeah, the Green Zone by Paul Greengrass <laughs> actually has a four. Fu- one goes fu- epic. It has a four out of yeah. Like they were thinking back in the seventies when they watched Scarface. Oh shit, this is just like Jason Bourne, but epic. <laughs> yeah, that's just what they were thinking. Yeah, man. Um, and I've seen Scarface, and I tell you, that's exactly what it is, Jacob. Say hello to my little friend. Okay, um, that's enough. What el- what else we got on the table? Uh, there are some new Homecoming posters, I believe you wanted to talk about. I think yeah. they look pretty cool. There was what one that I thought looked really fake. Yeah, um, which one? Oh, I don't know if it was an one official where poster or if it was just one, some art, but he was hanging off a billboard or some shit. Oh, the billboard, and, and it said one, and it says like Bronx. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked yeah, really no, that was fake. real. That was one of them. I just, I thought it looked good actually. They were shot, like, they were shot on location, so I don't I know quite how you think liked they look the, fake. I quite like the one where he was like laying down. And yeah. it was like a big shot. And Everybody he's was headphones saying, oh, it looks like garbage. Tower. I'm like, ah, it looks fine. It looks like a yeah. poster, you know? <laughs> I, I've i only heard positive things apart from a couple of people who I know who just bash everything. But um, no, I think it looks... I think they they look great. I like the suit more and more every time I see it. Um, I think that it looks great. And it's really colourful. It's not grey. It's re- It's a lot of blue, a lot of, a lot of bright red. But like, really I'm colourful just, posters. I'm looking forward to Marvel's lineup this year. Like, who would have thought that in a year where we're getting a new fucking MCU Spider-Man movie, that that would be my third most anticipated of the year? Yeah, right. Jeez. <laughs> Say it, yeah. <laughs> that is Bloody crazy. Hell. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, I I love Guardians of the Galaxy, and I would not have thought coming to this year it would be my third most anticipated Marvel movie. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Go. Guardians, Thor, then Spider Man. It would have been Spider Man, but just I'm so interested in seeing what Taker does yeah. with Thor. And I some of the th- art we've seen, it looks like in, it looks insane. Oh yeah, mine's mine's Thor, Spider Man, Guardians, but they're all very close. Um, just because I think I've seen I've seen Guardians, so I think this will be more of the same, which is still excellent. But I haven't seen a Marvel Spider Man. We'd better stop I talking about have this not seen. People are going to start thinking. All right. Of anyway, DC. Joseph Gordon Levitt. Oh nope. Sorry, Jacob. The Russo brothers are going to produce really what order we go in, but yeah. a sci-fi film directed by the Daniels. Now, everyone's headlining it. The Russo brothers, Russo brothers. No one gets me excited here. The Daniels. Because Swiss Army Man was one of my favorite movies of last year, and uh, it's cool to see that they're lining up another project. And, I mean, I can't see this being like a huge budget because Swiss Army Man didn't make a whole lot. But it oh, it made a big p- splash, and it's and it, it's produced it, by yeah, the Russo. It was a popular movie, and it, it I think it's one that's going to be a cult classic. So it's going to afford them opportunities to make more stuff. And A twenty four are a great studio. I don't know. I don't think this is by A twenty four, but um, I'm just saying that it's Swiss Army Man, and they they're putting out some really good shit. But no, uh, I'm just excited to see what they can do with the sci fi because Swiss Army Man is one of the most original things I've ever seen. And uh, it's interesting they're teaming with the Russo brothers. I'd like to see them return to directing comedy someday. That would be cool. That would be great. That's what I thought this was going to be because of all the headlines. Yeah. But um, it's just like, right. oh, people know them from Captain America. Let's put them <laughs> yeah. in the headline. Exactly. That always um, clicks. No one knows Joseph- who these fucking weird Daniel cunts are. Yeah, fucking A. Fuck them. Um, 
Joseph Gordon-Levitt, director, or you know who he is, but he directed, he made his directorial debut back in 2013 with Don John, which I love. Love Um, Don John. Don John. So, Jeff Gordon-Levitt is doing his follow-up directing film. He's directing and starring again in a musical beside Channing Tatum. Dude. Joseph Gordon Levitt, Channing Tatum, musical. They've got That's, my money from those that three That sounds phrases. amazing. I don't see how this can be anything less than fucking um, fantastic. It's it going to be fucking... It's going to be uh, La La Land times five. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because it has Channing Tatum and Joseph Gordon Levitt. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're oh, much man. sexier than Gosling and Stone. No, of course. But um, I, no, no, I like, love... Please I love both let it of be a gay actors. musical. That'll be hilarious. Oh, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Channing Tatum gets a lot of flack because he's like the but sexy like, guy, but um, he's but like, he's done some damn good performances. Like JGL just cast himself alongside the sexiest people he can find, male or female. Exactly. It's, if where it's <laughs> Scarlett Johansson doing. or it's Channing Tatum, he'll, he'll just do it, mate. But no, you're uh, right. Channing Tatum has a. I'm not. He has a bit of a. Fi- he has a I've, bit of a dad bod at the moment, Jacob. Have you seen the pictures nah. of him on E Weekly magazine? He has a bit of a. Bit I have a dad bod. I, do, I don't frequent E Weekly magazine to watch. <laughs> I see it. I work at Kmart. I see it. But every I've, year. I've been saying for years, like I think Channing is a good I, actor. I read it. Oh yeah, I 100% agree. Like, I think he's great. He's Fox, great comedic and and um he's great I, dramatic. I can't too. believe that after Foxcatcher people still fucking doubt him. It's cuz no one saw it. He was but, so yeah. damn good in that. He was hilarious in the 21 Jump Street films. He pretty much outshined Jonah Hill who is like known for comedy. Yeah. Um and he's and his good Magic Mike too. I mean, he didn't talk much in the first Magic Mike, but he was but no good one, in those no films. one watches. No, every, but you can't say that because everyone dismisses it. Oh, you're gay if you watch the Magic Mike films. They're great films. We say we've probably said this on the show before, but both Magic Mike and Magic Mike Two are damn good movies. Yeah, they are. Um, yeah, but uh, no change. The male stripping scenes are entertaining. Oh, they're, they're entertaining. choreographed so damn well. They're yes. choreographed so damn well. It's not what gets my engine running, but if it gets your... Well, I mean, maybe a little bit. It might, but, maybe um, a little bit. <laughs> I mean, you've got to respect them. You've got to respect the craft. <laughs> and, like, anyone who can keep their bodies up like that for long periods of time, I mean, you have to respect them a little bit. And, Jacob, in a move, in a, in a week where we get Joseph Gordon-Lever and Channing Tatum starring in a musical together, it's still not the best bit of news we're getting all week. Mm, I Jake think that Jill might Hall, still be the best. Jake Gyllenhaal is cast in a movie about the anarchists versus ISIS. Yeah, do you have the details wow. of this? Because I don't really know too much about it, but um, it's Jake uh, Gyllenhaal, so I will be watching it. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll watch anything he's ever Anarchist in, um, versus I mean, ISIS. I watch, is it I watch like, Bubble is it, Boy. Is it based on a book? I watch Bubble Boy. Is it based on a book or is it a true story? Uh, it's a true story, um, and it's directed by the this director well of Life, Daniel, Daniel Espinosa. Um, yeah, and I'm really keen for it. And it's, uh, it's the true, so it's, ba- it's, it's basically the true story is, it's basically the story of, um, uh, Zero Dark Thirty, which we just talked about. You know, it's a front, it's the front lines of Syria, uh, the front lines of Syria, and it's American radicals, um, going AWOL to fight ISIS because their orders were not to fight ISIS. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, so they, they went on their own and they went, and they went, uh, by themselves, uh, with guns separated, uh, to go and try and kill uh, them. It's and another I mean, movie based on a Rolling Stone article, like War yeah. Dogs. Yeah, so this exactly. should be better than War Dogs, hopefully. I mean, I know a lot of people said that after life they wanted to see Dylan Hall and Espinosa team up again. Now, can we just get Ryan Reynolds? Oh, God, I hope so. That would be amazing. They've got such good chemistry. I haven't seen life chemistry. yet, but I'm very excited. But, um, I'm, yeah, no, nah, this looks, this looks cool. Yeah, and um, the thing that gets me excited is it's a movie Jake um, ab- about ISIS, uh, which means Oscar, because, you know, they just bloody love their 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 culturally relevant stories, don't they? Fuck them. Their historical dramas and their wars. and But maybe Jake Gyllenhaal will finally get... I mean, if he didn't get nominated for Nightcrawler, he's not going to get nominated for anything Never. except playing a gay person. The only person he has to suck off to get an award is Heath Ledger, and he's dead, so no more awards for Jake I think we've Gyllenhaal. made that joke, like, maybe four times on the show now. You know what, Jacob? I'm going to make it a sixth time. The only person... No, all right. Um, so... <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, um, you, I guess uh, <laughs> that's news, but, like, we got a little bit of kind of news to talk about now. We're going to briefly discuss the uh, Justice League trailer, because, um, you know, we are renowned DC haters, Marvel fanboys. We are biased, or maybe 
they've just made a couple shit movies. But um, what do you think of the Justice League trailer? Does it lift your spirits for the new one or lower your spirits? Well, I tell you what, I have not got my Marvel paycheck in the mail yet. So I'm going to go ahead and say I didn't mind this trailer. I thought it was maybe even pretty good. Well, my check came through and cleared, so I did not like <laughs> this trailer at all. <laughs> at all. I, I no, the first time I watched in it, all I seriousness, was a fan, and I rewatched uh, it. And not, not the channel seriousness. I didn't like it. I just, I, it looks like more of the same. Like really, I, I, yes, I know it's not finished, but the set pieces look so goddamn CGI heavy that I'm just not going to be able to connect to any of it. You know? Yeah, I agree. Um, I, yeah, I'm going to say I like it. Like it is in like three out of five. If I was watching the movie, I do enjoy it. Um, I think everything with Aquaman looks amazing. He looks fantastic. He, cool. he kind of looks. Dude, he's kind of. They, he's they kinda, set a very low bar with his appearance in BVS. Oh yeah, when he just floated. <laughs> but, like, what was filming him? A camera? Was that? I don't. But Who he was just filming. Did he not break the camera when he broke the sound barrier? And like, what? Mm. I don't know. Uh, Any? Why would he? Why would he let that film? Who okay. found that footage? <laughs> yeah. Why did he let it film him and leave it? Anyway. Um, <laughs> he just looks like a rock star, you know, he just walks in, he saves a guy, he throws the guy on the counter, oh yeah, the beer's on him, he takes a beer, walks off, you know, he he, walk, he looks badass in his suit, bad suit, I dig it, he's just, he just looks cool, and then, Jacob, even though you don't like the trailer, you got to admit, him riding the Batmobile was fucking awesome. That was yes. so sweet. Yeah. And then yep. he does some super jump, which apparently everyone can just do in this universe. I mean, super I've seen that like 400 times. The super jump where he just jumps and he jumps like 400 meters. In the, uh, like he, the, the Batmobile's probably going like 200 miles and he just jumps right mm. in front of it. Um, I, and he's I, like, yeah, it was awesome. I like the way Affleck looks in it. He looks like a, he's going to be great again as Bruce but Wayne. The thi- he, th- this trailer starts off with Affleck um, riding a horse into... Why wouldn't he just ride his bat plane or his helicopter? Because why would cool, Jaron? But (laughs) but it would. But he parks the horse up a hill and walks down there. Just drive a car, mate, or fly a helicopter. Your bat submarine, your bat anything. And now this Batman, the the grizzled old hero, is making quips. Oh, I mean, I like, I like the, I thought there were decent quips there in this, bad you know, quips. like uh, Batman and the Flash. I mean, sorry, Aquaman and the Flash's quips. They're they're pretty good, you know. That's their character, especially the new way they're going with Aquaman. You know, he's they've kind of reinvented him entirely, so you know he can be a quippy guy. But well, yeah, this old no grizzled Batman joke, would not. Injustice. This yeah, <laughs> thank thank you. Like I mean. Snyder gets all the credit, but Injustice did it like two years yeah. before Snyder did. Let's let's admit it. Like his finishing scene, his finishing oh, move, bro. where he stabs the you shark. and the shark eats you. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, it's just it's just yeah, it's Mortal Kombat with DC characters. It's fucking awesome. I can't wait for the second one. It's gonna be amazing. Um, anyway, I uh, seriously um, like he's old and grizzled. Why would he be making jokes about himself or just jokes at all? I don't. Yes, <laughs> is she with you? I thought she was with you. But um. Sh- but you emailed her. Yeah. Batman, of course she's with you. you e- she emailed you like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> what a fucking reason. You were just no, talking I, to her. I think I'm still I'm still looking forward to the movie. Like, you know, it'll be ah, cool to so see am I. characters this... on screen. I like gonna... the casting choices they've made. It's just, it's all up to you, Zacky Snyder. There's still not many. There's still, the... I mean, that I think that shot of Wonder Woman is cool when she like lands in front so of him and she's like... Though. Oh yeah, dude. When she, when she, well, that's just Zack Snyder. That's what you have to expect. When he land, when she lands in front of Aquaman in the Flash, and she's just like, "Shall we?" And she pulls out a sword. That was awesome. But um, I still, I'm still not fully 100 percent bought on Gal Gadot because yeah, we've no, only seen 15 say, minutes of her. I don't, I just don't like the look of her as the character. She looks, I don't know. Yeah, you know? she looks kind of small, right. like kind of skinny, like for she an Amazonian like, warrior. She doesn't look like she has a whole lot of charisma. No, she's, she's kind just of bland. like, "Hi, I'm here. I'm Wonder Woman." Yeah, look, um, look at me. I'm a person who is wonder uh, woman. and and woman. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but overall, this got me. I mean, after the teaser, I didn't really enjoy. This got me a bit more excited for the Justice League movie, which is saying something because it's directed by Zack Snyder, who I despise. Um, but nah, whatever we say about everything, DC are nailing their castings for the most oh, part. Oh yeah, man. Um, ben Affleck as Batman is perfect. Margot Fucking. Robbie is a great choice for Harley Quinn. I still maintain Jared. I liked. Jared I like Jared Joker. Leto's Joker. I'm not gonna lie. And, I um, really enjoyed Ezra that. Ezra Miller's The Flash, but like, oi, after having yes. watched, we need to talk about Kevin now. Do you agree that I think <laughs> Ezra Miller would make a good Joker? 
I agree. Yeah, he would. I'd, yeah. I'd say more Riddler actually, but um, no, I'd love Joker to see too. him as one of those sorts of characters. Yeah. Um, and and dude, Jason Momoa as Aquaman. Can yes. you get any better than that? The only person that would be as good as Aquaman is Chris Hemsworth, and he's already tied up as Thor. So I mean, you cannot. Jason Momoa was a mountain of a man, and he's charismatic, and he's yeah, funny. Hemsworth would be a fucking great Aquaman now that you oh, mention it. He fucking oh, would, wouldn't he? Yes. He, you're damn right he would. But um, no, I'm glad he's with Thor at the moment. But he would be an amazing Aquaman. They but, cut um, his hair. I'm so mad. Oh yeah, but uh, oh yeah, but um, yeah. Anyway, um, it's just Aquaman, man. I mean, he looks so awesome. Jason Momoa is a mountain. And he's awesome and he's funny and I just love him. And even when he's just, like, he goes on the, I just love him because he goes on the, like, he'll go on a talk show like Jimmy Fallon and he goes in, like, his trackies and his, and his, um, and a, and a server short and thongs and he comes out and he gets, he gets Jimmy Fallon's assistant to bring him beer and then he just throws <laughs> knives against her. I saw that. He just, he's, he's in his trackies and his thongs and he's drinking beer and he's, and he's doing a throwing knife demonstration. Yeah, he's, he's a funny Axe, actually. He's a funny he's fucking fucking good, Like yeah. I, I saw something, it was like a give or something and someone asked him like um i'm sorry how are you i'm samoan man he's like how are you going to adapt to the challenges of like learning to swim for aquaman and shit and he's like hawaiian bro hawaiian bro (laughs) yeah (laughs) like yeah does he is he i'm not wrong he just looks like eight boulders stack on top of each other (laughs) yeah have you seen that picture of him with two of his bodyguards it looks like he's protecting (laughs) yeah yeah it was like i want to get it's like my goals are to be so big it looks like i'm bodyguarding my bodyguards it it looks like he's the final boss in a video game and the bodyguard (laughs) the two two mini bosses that you have to fight (laughs) alongside him dude yeah that's fucking great alright so that's our thoughts for the Justice League I didn't mind it Jacob in minded it in conclusion Jason Momoa is a mountain man he is eight boulders stacked on top of each other Jacob our film swap for this week yes it uh, is a film swap we do you want films. to we <laughs> we did swap films do you want to talk about what you gave me and I, I gave will, him one that I get onto it I gave you Winnie to talk about Kevin right I forgot for a minute that's what I gave you right you absolutely did, mate. Yes, I mentioned that a few minutes ago because uh, it's between that and another movie, and like just for Ezra Miller's performance and that is insane. And Tilda Swinton is amazing in it too, as his mom. And uh, it's a uh, it's a dark, scary movie. And uh, without spoiling where it goes, because I knew where it went before I watched it. So, but I can imagine not knowing where it goes and watching it, it would have been kind of insane. Oh, so, that sucks you know? that you knew where it went. Would you, yeah, I've, I, a friend told me about it. He was like, "It's not." I can't say. I can't say. Just uh, yeah. What you what you think of we need to talk about Kevin? Uh, yeah. So Jacob, the mother of a teenage sociopath no, who went on a high be school. No, don't reading those fucking synopsis. <laughs> Cut your own path. Oh my god. Oh yeah. I just you're bloody you're bloody lucky you told me not to because I just realised the synopsis has the spoiler in it. Oh no! Don't read the synopsis for when you. Yeah, right, Kevin, guys. Please. Do not go into do not letterbox when you talk about Kevin. It gives it away in the or, synopsis. Like Jake, I wouldn't even it, risk going on IMDb or anything. Like, while I'm talking about it, just look that. it up on the letter. While yeah. I'm talking about it, look it up on letterbox. That's I hate fucked. That it gives do that. it away. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Right. Even, even... Because, yeah, like, right. when you watch the movie, it's not revealed until it yeah, happens. Yeah, I know. I know. The, yes, it's told non with a non-linear fashion, and you know some stuff, but you don't really know what happens at the end until it happens. It's, yeah, it, right. it, it is a spoiler, so I don't know why they'd put that in the That's the fucked. Thing, but, That's really... Yeah. That, that really annoys me. Um, anyway, so... This, um, yeah, we need to talk about Kevin, and it stars uh, Tilda Swinton as a mother, and she has a child, Ezra Miller... And uh, basically, she you, names you, the child Ezra Miller. Yeah, it's called as he plays. He's actually Kevin's playing himself. His nickname. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, he plays himself. Um, no, Kevin. Uh, we need to. And Jacob, she never once says we need to talk about Kevin. So I'm giving this a one out of five. How about um, John C. Riley? And he's just Ezra Miller is just a real trouble kid. Ever since he was a kid, like he's three years old and he's throwing his shit on the ground and he's just he's just an asshole. Um, he's just grown that way. Like there's like his his mum and dad are really supportive and they really love him and they're trying their best and for no reason other than he's an asshole. He's just a dick and he grows up that way and it just gets worse and worse. And the older he gets, the worse things he does. And she drives he drives Tilda Swinton crazy. Like he ruins her life. Like he ruins her job. He ruins her family life. He Embarrass- he embarrasses her in public. He does a lot of shit. John C. Riley plays the father. He's so damn good. I love John C. Riley so much. Oh, I forgot to mention my diary display. I just watched. I just watched today. Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox story, starring John C. Riley. Nice. I haven't good. put it in my diary yet. It's very low Arbitau, but it is good. It's it's pop star, but a lot less funny. 
Oh, okay. A lot, a lot less funny. Really over the top. It's it starts with him cutting his brother in half with a machete. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, that's pretty um, good. It's it's ninety minutes. It's pretty quick. You should download it and give it a go. It's pretty yeah. funny. Um, no, it's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, and it's just really good. And it's it gets really dark, and it, it's kind of art housey at the start. Um, where she's oh, just it's very f- art house. Yeah, it's very it's very art house. It's very out there. Um, so you have to. Yeah, go in with an open mind. Don't expect like a don't expect a linear, just regular story. Mm. It's very unlinear. There's very there's lots of imagery. There's lots of things that's very out there. Um, and I really enjoyed it. If it turns into like a horror some, psychological if, thriller. If you ever want to convince someone not to have kids, just get them to watch oh, this God. movie. Yeah, I'm, I'm never having them now. Like it's yeah. scares the shit out of me. Nah, it's a good movie. And the, there's one shot in that movie that like always has stuck with me, and uh, it involves sprinklers. Oh, dude, don't don't talk about that. It's yeah, that's, that's horrifying. Like, if you've seen the movie, you know the shot I'm talking about. It's a great. It's horrifying. Shot. Um, yeah, it turns into a psychological. It turns into like Black Swan towards the end, a psychological <laughs> thriller, just not as good. But um, I I thought we need to talk about Kevin was fantastic. I really enjoyed it, and I gave it a four out of five. Jacob. Ezra Miller's such a good actor, man. Like just put him. Oh, in I everything. know, man. He was and so good Tilda Swinton for Prison Experiment too. She should have. She should have got an Oscar nomination, in my opinion. Tilda Swinton. Mm, I think she this, was this is the best performance I've, I've seen of hers, in my opinion. She um, was brilliant. Snowpiercer will be up there too. Yeah. And so it is. All right. So I gave Jacob a movie I watched in 2014. I've been asking him to watch it since then because it was almost. It was just about in my top ten of that year, but. Um, he kept refusing. Oh, actually, I think you didn't refuse. You're like, yeah, I'll get to it, and then you just didn't. And I'm like, oh yeah. shit! It's not that I actively that. didn't want to like, watch it. I just never got around to watch. Yeah, it. Yeah, I'm like, all right, I'll make him watch it that. Did and play this it is our cinema, and I didn't see it though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a movie that I grew up with, so I had more of a connection than okay, Jacob. Chris Duckman. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, I used to watch these movies at my grandma's house a lot. I really enjoyed them. And when I heard they were making a movie, I was like, oh, no. It's a movie Paddington by Paul King. UK movie about the... And no, it's not a Ted ripoff. <laughs> it's, Why would it's, anyone think that? It's basically Ted for kids. Um, no, it's not. Um, I Yeah, I don't know I why anyone you. would. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I was about to explain it, but uh, Jacob, do you want to do you want to go? Well, listen up, cunts. It's time to break out the fucking marmalade, all right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Paddington <laughs> is a movie about a bear who enjoys marmalade, and he lives in he lives in uh, darkest Peru, I believe. <laughs> yeah, that's and, it. Uh, in, in, Dar- his, <laughs> that's just it. Darkest Peru with his with aunt, his, uh, aunt, aunt, and uncle. His uncle sadly perishes in a uh, storm-related accident, but uh, he he makes his way to London and meets a family played by uh, Sally Hawkins and I don't know the other people who play them, but they're a British family <laughs> and uh, Michael Gamborn, I think. The bloke, like you know, Walters, he's, you he's your all. typical father, like, I don't like this bear, I don't want him in my house. But then the rest of the family are like, hey, we do like this bear, but we to do be like fair, him in my house. And I would not he, want a stray bear living he, in my house. He spends a bit of time with the bear, they go on some adventures, <laughs> and eventually he's like, you know what, maybe we could have this bear in our house. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. We'll wait and I see don't know. If, the, if the bear gets to be in the house. We'll have another but, um, gander. It's also like a Mission Impossible spin-off because he, <laughs> he climbs up an air vent using dust busters, <laughs> yeah. which was pretty cool when they got, they broke the music out. And Nicole Kidman hangs from the ceiling at one point, which was uh, very uh, Ethan Hunt-esque. Especially uh, Nicole considering Kidman they went the out for a long time. She was like having a lot of fun, I reckon. She was pretty good. And like she was like really chewing the scenery. Like she was pretty over the top, but I enjoyed that. Um, uh... Bad. Who played him? Ben Wishaw played ben Paddington. Winshaw. He was pretty damn good. I like him as an actor, and he you know he his voice fit the childlike innocence of the character. Yeah, he's not a child, but I think it really, really fit Paddington because I've never seen a Paddington movie or show or whatever in my life. I have no familiarity with the character at all. So this was my, um, you know, uh, entry point. Yeah, virginity with loss with uh, Paddington. I don't know if I'll go back and watch the old cartoons, but uh, I really you enjoyed don't have this to. movie. <laughs> and it, it was really sharp and really funny as well. Like it was pretty. There are a lot of like subtle gags that kids might yeah. not get. That um. Ma- but Jacob, what other laugh. kids' movie? What other children's movie makes Shakespeare references? None of them. Oh, a, a, a Winter's Tale. You know, exit yeah. pursued by a bear. Exit pursued I only, by I mean, I only bear. know that Let's from another movie. But let's boo boo. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes. So you're saying we should but, leave? Yeah, it's shit here, innit? I mean, it's pretty wacky. There's a lot of like really over the top slapstick humor and stuff. But um, nah, I I, I did I did uh, quite enjoy it, and I will look forward to the next one, Paddington. Yeah, so, yeah, I, good. It's like way better than it had any right to be. Oh yeah, it has so like the thi- I think the thing about it that makes it way because when I saw it, I was like, holy shit, how was it that good? I think it just had a lot of heart and a yeah. lot of it. It had so much heart and a lot of charm to it. It was I mean, really yeah. It is pretty simple and it is geared towards little kids, but they 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 did everything right. Yeah, everything. Um, I don't think I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure what they could have done to make it better. I thought it was perfect. And I just looked it up and it's 99% on Rotten Tomatoes and that makes me happy. That's alright, I guess. Yeah, it's fine. It's no... It's... Yeah, it's not great. It's, it's alright. Yeah, alright. So yeah, that's Paddington. Uh, that's uh, Film Spot for the Week. And... Uh I'm sorry, I'm I'm really running on empty here. Um, I'm not a great host tonight. So, Jaron, what do we got next? I would absolutely love to, Jacob. Next, we have our last segment for the night, and this is our top five Jake Gyllenhaal performances. Snake well, Gyllenhaal. There was a <laughs> there was a lot of things we we're going to do instead, uh, but you know, we this is he's we he's both of our favorite actor. Point. He's been my favorite he's, actor yeah, for he's, years. He's Jacob's favorite actor. It's just. He's just everything he's in, no matter the, the movie's man. quality. He is just exceptional in. He hasn't. He, in my opinion, I know I've seen Bubble Boy. He doesn't have a bad performance. Bubble he's, Boy, I wouldn't argue is. It's like it's bad, but like the room kind of bad, where it's enjoyable. I, what do you think? He's room bad in it? No way. No, nah, what I mean, the is movie like, is room bad. The, yeah, there is no. Poss- there is no physical way that anyone could be good in that role. I think he's the. I think anyone else. He's the and best that would anyone be hard could to watch. have done in it. Anyone else in that movie would be hard to but watch. Like, but with him in the role, it's it's just Paddy, easy and fun Paddington to chill. isn't funny because of his great performance. I mean, not Padding. I'm still looking yeah, at my Paddington, Paddington page. Paddington like, is not. Bubble Boy isn't funny because of his stellar performance. It's funny because it's so bad. But it, also, do you agree that with anyone else in the role, it just would have been hard to watch? But with oh, him, yeah. it's just entertaining. Dude, the, the only reason you can enjoy that is because it's funny to watch like this brilliant actor do this. Yeah, exactly. Um, anyway, yeah, what we're saying is just he's I just do good have it everything. ranked above Prince of Persia because I remember nothing about it. Uh, I do not. Um, and he's <laughs> our. We're not doing. We're not doing Jack Gyllenhaal movies. That would be a yeah, different. Yeah, we're list. ranking My top five our favorite. Would be completely different. We're ranking our favorite performances of his. So yep. but All right. it's purely based on the performance. Yep. All right. So I'm going to do want to rattle off your honorable mentions and then go into your five honorable mentions and then go into number five. Uh, you know, if if you were into that sort of shit, I guess uh, I'll oblige you. I'll oblige your sick fucking fantasy. So I've got some honorable mentions. Let's go. End of Watch uh, plays a policeman officer. He's bold in it, which was nice to see. Um, he, you know, he films stuff. <laughs> he hangs out with Michael Penne and uh, he... Gets his heart broken a little bit, and I think we got our heart broken a little bit too. But uh, it's that a movie damn... would make a grown man cry. Oh, it does make me cry, man. End of watch. Great, great found footage movie. It is technically damn um, right. Demolition from last year. I uh, went not a great film, but he was fantastic in it. I will say he's pretty damn good. Donnie Darko. Really, really love the movie. Um, it's just it's one of the less memorable performances of his, but he is fantastic in it, man. I th- I think about fucking a lot. <laughs> I think about fucking Christina Applegate. What and about his, your family? No, I don't think about fucking my family. His, That's his gross. Whole, his whole rant about the Smurfs having sex with each other is hilarious. Yeah. Smurfs are asexual, man. They don't even have reproductive <laughs> organs down there. They don't, man. These serious. And as of Smurfette being being created, that, that's just ridiculous. He was made by Gargamel and sent in as a spy, but the Smurf goodness transcended her, and she became a part of the Smurf village. That was beautiful, man. Thanks, man. Um, and yeah, and no, one that really hurt to leave out of the top five is Prisoners. Detective Loki, he's incredible in that. Uh, he blinks a lot. He, you know, there's a lot of mystery to his character. Um... And he, he, yeah, no, he was very, very good. Especially, like, at the end when he's trying to save the little girl and stuff. Uh, very, very, very riveting stuff from uh, Jakey Gyllenhaal. Now, the top five was very, very hard to put in order. But uh, my number five is actually Zodiac. Because his performance in a, in a David Fincher movie with a ton of different memorable things about it. Jake Gyllenhaal still manages to stand out. Because he's this guy. He's not a cop or anything. He's just this cartoonist. And 
and he becomes obsessed with finding the Zodiac Killer and devotes all of his time to it, basically loses his wife because of it. Um, and he's just, you know, he's that, that's like his, and then like, you know, in the end when he kind of has that encounter with the guy who may be the killer, you just, the look on his face, like, he's like, yeah, I think that's as far as I want to go. But, um, that's, Character how about that? Uh, John Carroll Lynch. John how about Carole when he meets Lynch. with that guy, um, who like made the film posters or whatever that guy did. And when he meets with him in his apartment, that scene is really, really terrifying. Oh, the basement like, scene. Yeah. Gyllenhaal, just a great, great portrayal of obsession and the best performance in a movie full of great performances. You're damn right. I am going to rattle some of mine off. I, I love the man. I've seen 21 or so of his movies. It's fantastic. Uh, he's great I've in all of them. i 16. Yeah. Um, so he's just great in all of them. Some some ones that you didn't mention, ones like I love him in Love, love and Other Drugs. Not the Neither greatest film. That. It's cheesy, but it's still fun, and his, his abs are in it, so that's fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Source Code, uh, I love that movie. Uh, Brothers, I think he's really good in it. Jarhead, he's really good in. Life, he's really good in. Enemies, fantastic in. Southpaw, underrated performance, fantastic in it. Just the movie isn't as good as the Quite others. Uh, you're not wrong. He is indeed quite buff. Uh, end of watch. He's you, you said it. He's a neo-Nazi. He's, well, he's not, but he's, he's bold. Not. And he and he and he, he videos a lot. And I then, suspect that his Bubble Boy character is a neo-Nazi. Oh, definitely. He's got to be. Um, and then one that hurts to leave off because it was my favorite leading performance of last year, and that is Nocturnal Ooh, Animals. He leaves it off. My number six. That's just how good he is. He has five performances that were better than the best performance of last year. He's. I just. Love him in that movie. He's so damn good. Um, and my number five is one that you had in your honourable mentions, and that is Donnie Zodiac. Darko. Told you. It was... Yeah. <laughs> um, it's my favourite movie of his, personally, um, and it's my fifth favourite performance. Uh, you know, it's one of his earlier performances. He's so amazing in it. And the thing that stands out for me is that even though in this crazy, twisted movie that's just really different and you do different layers, and every time you watch it, you'll find something different in it, something different in its meaning. Um, you know, he plays this... He has to play... He doesn't just play a teenage kid. He has to play a teenage kid who is kind of always half asleep. He's an insomniac. He's seeing things. And he has to kind of ride this line between someone you can still root for and then someone who's just completely crazy and he does that perfectly he's so damn good all of his outbursts are really great too um the outburst he has while he's sleeping he, he has to outburst but he has to keep his eyes closed and he has to kind of smile and laugh like in the bathroom when he's like touching there's just like for some reason there's just like a hologram oh, like, like glass oh, yeah, oh, yeah, right oh, in the middle oh, yeah. of the bathroom oh, yeah. and he can't can, touch I, can, it? I, can I stop you for one second there I just yeah. got one burning question about Donnie Darko that I never seem to like understand Here we go. How exactly does one suck a fuck? Ah, uh, I'd say it's it's kind of ambiguous. It's up to the user's dude, perception dude, of how they can suck a fuck. Such a fuck ass answer. Uh, yeah, such a fuck ass. <laughs> well, Jacob, you can fucking say that shit to me, but you know what? At least I don't commit. I don't doubt other people's commitment to sparkle motion like I do dude, with yours, mate. Don't I fucking do. ever fucking doubt my commitment to sparkle I motion. I do. I do. I'm not I am lie. all about that sparkle no, motion. No, I dis. I'm. I'm gonna say I disagree Don't with that, mate. Fuck with sparkle motion. I have motion. seen some fuck. I've seen you dancing with some other fucking motions, no. and it kind of pisses me off. Nah, sparkle um, motion. Yeah. Die. So basically, after an after narrowly after narrowly escaping a bizarre accident where a you know a, a jet falls off a plane and almost crushes him, As he's a troubled teenager played by Jake Gyllenhaal starts seeing visions of, of like a large bunny rabbit guy, a guy in a large bunny that rabbit suit. Human suit. Yeah, it's it's just amazing. It's so layered. It's so amazing. Patrick Swayze is really good in it. I'm 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 uh I, what is it um fucking uh I just watched a movie about it um yeah I love his line when he's like I'm an atheist but I, I think you're the fucking antichrist um <laughs> Drew Barrymore Maggie Gyllenhaal everyone's so great in it um yeah I love it that's Donnie Darko Jacob you on number four um yes I need to watch Donnie Darko again it's been like three years damn um I need to get it on blu-ray uh sorry man uh, okay that was hot yes my number four is Enema ooh nice It'd be a much different movie if it was titled Enema. It's about, like, <laughs> two twins getting fucking their assholes cleaned, you know? Um, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. 
Enemy is uh, a small film from Denis Villeneuve. I believe this came out the same year as Prisoners did, or 2014, the year after. It was filmed um, before Prisoners, but came out the year after. Yes. And uh, Snake Gyllenhaal plays this guy named... Is it Anthony? Is it... Yeah. Is that, one, yeah. one of them's named Anthony, I reckon, but he, <laughs> he plays two blokes. One bloke's this, like, mild-mannered college professor and he's bored and the whole movie's washed out with this like yellow colour palette because that symbolises that his life is just very drab and uh, boring and uh, he uh, you know he's hanging out at his university he watches this movie on his laptop and he sees this cunt in the movie who looks exactly like him he's just an extra he's not a movie star he's just someone sitting in the background and he's like hey that cunt looks exactly like me I should go find him and then you know what he does he goes and finds him and uh, the the two go and uh, have a chat and they're they're a bit freaked out it's like what the fuck man and uh, this is probably one of the most confusing movies you'll ever watch I needed the like ending, a though, man. analysis Damn. video to understand. The ending's insane. But no, Gyllenhaal, he plays two people in it, and he's just insanely good, man. He's very, very subtle, but he does a great job to differentiate the two characters and to express the bigger picture that's going on in the movie. And uh, no, he's very, very good in it. Uh, just about would have nominated him for some awards for that one. Yep, I think all of my top five, he could have got award recognition and some of the honorable mm. mentions. Um, anyway, my number four is by my favorite director with my favorite actor. You can't get better than that. It's Zodiac, David Fincher's Zodiac. Um, and my favorite actor is Brian Cox. No, um, so <laughs> Zodiac is a movie that every time I watch it, it just gets better for me. I think it's one of his most underrated movies and it's so damn good. You said it, uh, you've already talked about it. So it's about obsession. It's about a cartoonist who is, is really naive and he's a, he's a, he's a, what are you, a Boy Scout? Actually, Eagle Scouts, fourth degree. Um, he's, uh, I'm pretty sure that wasn't the quote. It's something, it's Eagle <laughs> something Scouts, like something that. else, but, um, Eagle Scouts, something else, fourth division, something like that. Uh, yeah, really naive cartoonist, Jack Gyllenhaal, who works in a newspaper, trying to, obsessed with hunting him down. Robert Downey Jr., um, is obsessed with hunting him down. He's kind of the lead, um, uh, uh, in journalist and yes. you know he gets so obsessed that this case crushes him and he quits his job and he becomes an alcoholic over this case and he ruins his life and Mark Ruffalo um, also looking for the Zodiac becomes obsessed with it and by the end he's so obsessed with it that he just has to let it go because it haunts him at night he can't he you know and um, it's a movie where you actually watch it and you're like oh shit like it's the most famous it's next to Jack the Ripper he's the most famous serial killer who didn't even he barely killed anyone he killed like four or five people which obviously That's is a I love Fincher, man. But, he takes um, this. He takes this movie yeah. about this infamous, mysterious serial killer and makes it a character study. Exactly. Um, he recreated some of the sets so they'd look exactly like how they were back in the day. Um, he showed and them. He actually, he, there's actually a lot of CGI in that movie that you would. Oh, he uses CGI, CGI in all of them. He uses CGI. CGI. In, or a girl in the dragon tattoo. He uses so much CGI. You yeah. don't even know. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, he uses a lot of CGI. Uh, and he showed this to a pre-screening of a bunch of uh, fans. I'm uh, uh, sorry, not f- not fans. <laughs> a bunch of the victims of the Zodiac. Zodiac like one of the guys. W- one of the go- <laughs> one of the guys who's a Survived to go to yak killing. Supporters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, one of the people who survived one of the kidding, um, you know, when um, he ties those two people up uh, and yeah. stabs them and one of them survives it, he showed them to one of them and the guy had to walk out of the theatre because he said it was so realistic. It looked exactly how it did back then, like exactly. Um, Presumably he really showed haunting, it to the one that survived, right? Yeah, no, he showed it to the dead one, and they cried. Yeah. Um, no, Jack Gyllenhaal is just... He stands out. Like you said, he stands out. He's amazing in it, and that's all I have to say. Yes, my number three is a movie that's already showed up in one or two of our lists uh, on an occasion, and that is uh, Brokeback Mountain. Uh, I well, just how about you let me jump right in there with you, Jacob? I wish I knew how to quit this movie, Jaron. Uh, oh, no, it's my number three as well. You know, this movie, we are, you know, we're apart quite often, but every year or so we rendezvous, we go on a quote unquote it's us. fishing trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I tell Molly, I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, Jacob and I, we're meeting up, we haven't seen each other I in tell, a year. You know, we're going to go watch some, I watch some Anne, movies. I tell Anne Hathaway, I'm going to go catch up with my <laughs> yeah. old buddy and. You, know, you see uh, these quotation marks yeah. I'm making with my claw hands? It means we're <laughs> not going to watch some movies. It doesn't. Nah, it yeah, doesn't. Jacob and I just the, fuck each other on a mountain. This movie is probably like the most relatable movie to us ever. Yeah, it's, 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 it's my life. And but I'm, um, I'm I, actually the one who's uh, bisexual and Jacob's fully homosexual. I'm uh, which, 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 whichever one pitches, I'm that one. 
<laughs> I can't you remember. reckon? I can't remember. You were, is it no. Heath Ledger? Jake Gyllenhaal, look at him in that movie. Of course he doesn't pitch. He's like shy and timid and... Yeah, yeah. No, so it's well, definitely... you get to be your hero. You get to be Jake Gyllenhaal. Well, you're wrong because I'm get not. To be, I'm the one who's... You, you're fully gay. I'm the one who's bi. I'm you, Heath Ledger. Then you, you get to be murdered because of your sexuality. No, that's you. And that's a huge spoiler alert. Ah, we spoiled it last time. It's fucking 12 years old. Oh, yep, no, yep, you're right. No, actually, it is 12 years old. So, And, you know, it's... Um, uh, yeah, and um, it's just devastating. Jake Gyllenhaal is so amazing. He conveys so much emotion in that line, and he's not even delivering it to the camera. It's on his back, um, and that's just so... Yes. It just, it's, it's his Oscar-nominated I watching, role. I was watching this interview with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, and he was talking about that scene, and he... He, he was like, yeah, was I on remember TV. that line being so iconic, and I watched it on TV, and yeah. I'm like, hey, you can't even see me when I <laughs> yeah. said the line. <laughs> Why was it so iconic? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah. No, I just don't know how to quit you. It's just... And he's it's, like, you know, when you're acting, you don't really think about where the camera is. You're just yeah, sort of doing exactly. it. But um, no, Ang Lee is masterpiece. It's so damn good. One Best yes. Picture. He was nominated. It it's his only win nomination. Best I think we had this discussion oh, last yep, time. You're it right. Got stolen by Crash. It got stolen by Crash. You're right. Uh, which is bullshit. But, I haven't um, seen Crash, and it's bullshit. Homophobes. No. Um. All right, Jacob. Hey. Your that was your number two. I think. Game? I think it was something like Crash got their DVD screeners out quicker or something, and that yeah, this was I around do, the yeah. time when DVD screeners were first coming into prominence. Um, and they loved it. Yeah. Crash Cinema, Crash Cinema took them. Their their lunch was a lot more expensive, and they sent them mm, a lot more things. Mm, yeah, <laughs> gift bags. What? How about fucking Tom Ford gave like the fucking foreign press or something a bunch yeah. of hell expensive <laughs> gifts, and they're like, "No, Tom, you can't do that." <laughs> <laughs> they gave him. I think he gave him like a hundred and fifty dollar colognes, and they just send them back. <laughs> Nocturne Isles did pretty well with, with Globe nominations. So. Yeah, they just send. Um, well, they just send them back. They would have been pierced. Hey, Jaren, speaking of nocturnal animals, Ooh, my number two Number two, is, really? My number two is Source Code, directed by Duncan Jones. His Sound best train. movie. He's very, very good. No, it's Nocturnal Animals is my number two. I love him in that, man. That and uh, the next one should have been fucking nominated for, man. This... this he, why was he not? I don't get it. Did me and you watch a different movie than the one everyone else did? It seems like it, yeah. He's so goddamn good in it. He's so fucking... I hate to overuse the word layered and nuanced, but he is. He's playing this guy at the highway scene, a terrified guy oh, trying yeah. not to be terrified, and, you know... He's balancing everything. He's, he's a coward. He failed family. to protect he's... his family, and obviously that parallels to the real-life story. And then we get to the real-life story where he's this guy, he's this sensitive but confident sort of guy, and he's in this relationship, and he was great. It just, you know, it was a, it was almost like a triple-layered performance in this movie. Um uh, and as, like at, towards the end when he's like you know he's just like a sort of a shell of what he once was in the you know in the story within a story and when like I, I'm glad he's dead fucking when he's going off and screaming and shit screaming at I want you Johnson. to tell me what they said yeah tell me what you did to them you should try it sometime killing people's fun <laughs> Killing I people's got that fun. The wrong way around. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Killing people's fun. You of all people should I think, try it sometimes. I think he is absolutely incredible in Nocturnal Animals, and it's pretty much what pushed him over the edge to be my favorite actor. Damn right, he's fucking amazing in it. My number two is one. So my your my your number two was one I had just in my honorable mentions that just didn't make it. Mm. Mine is one that just didn't make yours, yeah, and it is uh, Prisoners. Denis Villeneuve's Prisoners. Yes. Nice. Detective um, Loki. Yeah, this is maybe even my second favorite Jake Gyllenhaal movie, but um, I yeah, he plays Detective Loki. He plays a. Uh, the reason this underscores usually He's for me is because I fantastic think in that. I th- shut the fuck up. I think uh, Hugh Jackman is Oscar. This is my favorite, like maybe be my favorite performance of the decade by Hugh Jackman. Ooh, um, but this is cool. a this is a Jake but Gyllenhaal list, underrated for sure. But this I is a Jake Gyllenhaal list, and I disagree that Jackman should have been nominated. Damn right, he should have won that year. Um, oh. Yes, for in my opinion, in Not yours no, Leo. but in in mine he should have. Um, and it's just yeah. So um, a so Hugh Jackman plays a dad whose children go missing. I'm sure you know what this is. And Detective Loki, he's a guy who solved every single case he's ever been put on. He's a young kind of detective up and coming, and he has some battle scars, dude. He, he has a lot of tattoos. He's got he, like has a, a, he has a he has a twitch tattoo or something. Yeah, shit. he has a twitch. So like, he you blinks know, a lot. Where did this guy come from? And like, there's so much development in his character. Like um, when um. 
when he's like going off at the priest uh, in his house when he finds that little trap door and he talks about like how he's in a boys' home or something like something boys' home. Remember that blah blah. blah. Like so yeah. he he was probably diddled as a child. Because oh he yeah, know. he's 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 got a twitch. He's very he's he's always on edge, but he's always just riding that line between absolutely crazy and like really calm. Really calm. And yeah, yeah so the whole time like, he's like, kind we, of really he calm, finds a but bunch he's also of jars like of snakes and he just keeps fucking opening yeah, them instead. Exactly. Of, like, he he opens away. a jar and there's snakes in. He's like, oh god! And he opens the next one, and it's just because this guy is trying to keep a cap on, you know. And in the end, he ends up succeeding, and he saves these girls. And with the shootout with Melissa Leo, um, you know, it's just so it's just really hard to watch sometimes. And he's just so damn good and scary, and also on edge. And you know, he's a guy where you look at him and he's kind of scary, but he's you'd want him on your case. Like he's just a really damn good detective. Yeah. He's he's funny when he wants to be, like uh, like when they're discussing zodiac signs at the very beginning. Ah, oh, yeah, I'm a Taurus. Uh, that means I. Like, give that i hope that means you tip big um and then yeah he's fine he's just i goddamn love him in this movie i goddamn yeah, love he, it's my he, favorite he, denny movie gyllenhaal did so much work to create like a backstory for his yeah character, like he even though it's not you know mentioned in the film it adds so much exactly to it. like it's not a like the movie's not even about him but you you look at that character and you're damn i want to know more about him like yeah he like he he said he said he signed on to this movie with Denis, and he's like i'll sign on but i don't want to play a throwaway police officer i want to play someone who people are going to look at and go i want to know more about that character so they sat yeah. down i think he said for a whole week just those two together in a house and designed this character and designed tattoos for him and the twitch yeah. and Denis all this would stuff be like and, a fantastic director to work with because Oh, he's yeah. so open to Damn right. listening to what actors and screenwriters have Everyone's to say and great. stuff. Like even with like a, a rival, like um, a lot of directors would just like take the script and then shove the screenwriter away and say "fuck you, I'm doing my own thing." But yeah, he always works really closely with the screenwriter, which is why his movies are so damn great because he understands what they're about. You're damn right, and Prisoners, every moment matters, uh, it's really intense, it's really long, it's my favourite Denny movie, it goes by Same. really quick, um, and it's absolutely, it's just spoiler alert for our Denny list, but um, no, it's yeah. just fantastic, it's just it's just amazing. Jacob, you're number one? My number one. Ah, I we mean, can both talk about this. I think on. it's gotta be, it's, it's fucking gotta be Bubble Boy. Everest. Nah, it's it's the it's the good girl. Everest is great, I have to say. Um, no, it's it's Nightcrawler, man. And this is this is a performance that I fucking slept on when it first happened. Like when I when I first watched it, he wasn't even in my top five of that year. I was like, yeah, he was good. I wouldn't have nominated him. And I want to go back and punch 2014 Jacob in the cock because he was so very wrong. Oh, I've watched God this damn. movie like six times now, and I, it's one of my favorite performances. Ever he should have video production uh, news. That's how it should be read. That's he should, how it should have be said. Absolutely been nominated. And honestly, at this point, I would should have won. Would, I think he should have won. He, he should have so won. Good. Um, he was nominated for the Globe, but he did not. And it was an outrage. Everyone was outraged because yeah. it was just absolutely bullshit. He's so, he basically leads this movie by himself. You Fucking know, Bill Paxton shows up, Renee Redman. Russo shows up. So does Riz Ahmed. He basically like the lead of. He's, I mean, he's obviously the lead. he's basically like just the only person in this movie. Apart Nightcrawler from is a movie about this character. Like, it is him. It's like, everything else is back. He's the Nightcrawler. We are just looking into this fucking guy's psyche. and He's one of the best like, absolutely psychopaths we've seen on screen. He is just... A, it's a great look at like the shady, seedy side of LA, and just the there are there are probably a lot of people like this guy walking around. People oh, who yeah. you know you might not look like much when you look at them, but there are people who are capable of some fucked up shit and just driven fucking people. And he has some great, great monologues. I, I believe that uh, you know success comes to those who work hard, and like you know always monologues about being in the workforce and yeah. shit. <laughs> Sounds Jacob. like a, sounds my like motto is: like if you want to win the lotto, you got to earn the money to buy a ticket. Yes, I think Lou is inspiring. <laughs> <him just laughs> to reach a little higher. I won the Tour de Mexico on this bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. You, you, it, there's a shot, and like it shows the biker pull up in his thing, and you can see he locks Lou up his just bike. Watching him, you can see Lou just watching him out the corner of his eye. He's not even looking at him. You can just see Lou yeah. staring straight ahead, and you know he's watching this guy. On the and bike. he just and it, then, he just ties he just, up his hair into a man bun, and then goes down, and then it just cuts to him in a pawn shop with the bike. Right, oh, and he bike has any he, he built a whole backstory. I won the yeah. Tour of Mexico on this bike. This bike cost me twenty four hundred. 
hundred new. Uh, and he's just like, <laughs> yeah, I'll take, uh, I'll take no less than fifteen hundred. I can only give you three. I, I, that's that's an absolute ripoff. What about twelve? I can, <laughs> I can go for five. What about ten store credit? What do you want, kid? I want a video camera and a boom mic. It's just, yes. it's absolutely amazing. It's Legend. just, he tra- like, the thing is, when you see this, you don't see Jake Gyllenhaal. You no, see this. He's so gaunt. He's, like, lost a little weight. And oh, and like, he did Southpaw right before this, man. How'd he drop that weight so bruh, damn quick? Bruh, like, the way he curls his lips, even, is just, like, it's, like, he's just, it's, like, it's amazing. He's so good. Yeah, you know what? That shot where he's holding the camera above his head after he's moved the dead oh, body man. to get a better shot. And he's just, like, got this gigantic smile on his face. Bro. And Blue dude, Bloom this is one of the best movies so damn right. I've ever seen. He walks... I want to watch this now after work. I'm gonna. I'm probably going to watch it. He walks through the I house. Watch this a lot. <laughs> He walks through the house. Like it's actually an underrated dark comedy too. But no, he walks. <laughs> he walks through the house of the people who had just been murdered, and he puts the camera up on children who have been murdered, and he just has a straight face. He's not like, oh my yeah. god. He's just like, yep. Oh, that's a good shot. Yep. He was. He goes over to two dead people. Be a oh, dead yep. baby in that crib. Exactly. And he's like, because he walked up there just with a straight face. Where there's a crib with blood on it, and he's like, oh yeah. And, and, then, and then how he how he goes up to the news crew, and he's like, you will call me video production news, and. That's how uh, Right. And how That's he how gets him to said. say, he gets him to say like, oh yes, he uh, went into the house to offer assistance, maybe yeah. to the victims. You will, you will <laughs> introduce me to all the news anchors. I will form my own ties and I will disband. I'll form my personal personal relationships. Like he, like the way he talks, it sounds like he's he, just saying buzzwords. Yeah, and writing a resume. Oh, what about when he blackmails her into sex? Just oh casually, yeah, just casually blackmails like, Renee Russo into sex. It doesn't show it, but you know it happened. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> and um. Uh, yeah, it's one scene that's actually underrated that just scares me, but, like, it's nothing, is when he's watching TV and there's just something so stupid and happens. he's just, just laughing. Like, <laughs> he starts laughing. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> and just, like, cracks Cleaning up. And I'm just like, plant. Jesus. Yeah, and then he goes crazy <laughs> and he breaks the mirror and he punches it. He actually cut his hand open and he had to go. He had to quit <laughs> filming for three days, but he finished that scene. He did a Leo. Um, it's just so damn good. Everyone talks... It's, it's his best, and it, everyone talks about it for a reason. Freaking, um... Fuck, what's his I actually remember because when this came out, it was like um, when this came out, it was on like seventy percent of Rotten Tomatoes, and I was like, "Oh, all right, that's got to be pretty good." And then I didn't look, and it had like forty reviews, and it was like seventy, like seventy-one or something. I'm like, "Oh yeah, nice." And then I watched it. I'm like, "God damn, I loved it. That's better than 70. And I looked at it, and it's like ninety-six yeah. percent. Like, Jesus Christ! But like, <laughs> wait, you know, Rick, what if my problem with people isn't that I don't understand them? It's that I don't like don't them. like them. Oh man! At that moment, he's, you know, he's, yeah. He's or fine. the very <laughs> opening scene is him beating a police officer pretty I much know, to death. Yeah. You don't even see it. You, but he just beat. He's like, "Oh, I, I just came in here. I didn't know it was private property. There's signs everywhere. <laughs> can I see your ID? Oh yeah, of course you can. After just fucking beats him to death. <laughs> like it's crazy." Trying he's to sell amazing. scrap metal to people and shit, and then he just <laughs> yeah. sees these nightclubs and he's like, "Hey, yeah. I want to do that." <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, I, I, wait, what about? I can. I. 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 Um. I want a job here. No, I'm not hiring you. I can be interested in an internship. I don't need money straight away. I can learn. I can develop. I'm a fast <laughs> I'm learner. A I'm not hiring thief. a fucking thief. And, and he's then, just like, hmm. then he just sort of puts his finger up, like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah good he, he like no, he like nods <laughs> and points at him. He's like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> and the most disturbing thing about it is that he wins. Yeah, exactly. He succeeds. He and gets, he earns the American dream, dude. He 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 ha- he he owes all his success to stealing a bike because that's how he got his camera and shit. <laughs> Oh, and he God. steals people's shots. He's just and like he just. What about the very first time when he's learning and he just he just videos like a domestic disturbance and they're like, "What the <laughs> fuck are you doing here?" He's like, "I'm fairly certain I'm allowed to be here. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here, man!" He tries to interview. He tries to interview. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, they just came in the fucking house and he's like, "Yeah, Could you do it again without cussing." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm fairly certain I'm allowed to be here. Get the fuck out of here, man! Like, oh, I love uh, it. Legend, that is yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal. Top five, Jake Gyllen- All right, so we still managed to go over an hour ten with the show. Yeah, that was. But uh, that 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 is the show, I believe. Um, no, no, guess the quote today, but we are going to bring that back at some point. Um, oh yeah, because we like it. Um, so I, I, yeah. Um, thank you guys for watching. We love doing this for you. It's really fun. We love doing this for us. We're not going to lie, Jacob. I did it for yeah, me. Get, I liked it. No, it I was liked, good I at was it. Good Breaking at it. Bad. It made me I mean, we're not, hard. I mean, we are probably the greatest podcast in the world. Um, but that's someone's probably said that probably like somewhere maybe, at least maybe, once. We we got to be in the top 80. Yeah, no, you think. Top eight, I reckon top, top 80. Top 500. Top, top, top 
Prop. Yeah, yeah, there's probably a lot more than that out We're there. We're probably in the top 500 uh, podcasts that have two people going back and forth from two different states in Australia. Yeah. I'd say top 500 maybe weak. Uh, very weak, but we're up We're there. probably the best podcast called Children of Film. <laughs> yeah, uh, top 10 at least. Bottom yeah. half, but, you know, we're up so, there. Yeah. All right, that's it. You know, we suck at ending shows, so thanks for watching. I'm not going to abuse you this time. I'm going to say thank you for watching. We love you guys. 